Next up, though, here on C-SPAN 3, highlights from day one of the Porteous impeachment trial. Representative Adam Schiff of California is the chief Democratic impeachment manager in the impeachment trial against federal judge Thomas Porteous. Representative Schiff in the impeachment trial against federal judge Thomas Porteous. Representative Schiff, who is Judge Porteous and what are the articles of impeachment he faces? Uh, judge Porteous was uh, first a state court judge for about 10 years. He was then appointed by President Clinton to the federal bench. Uh, he was impeached by the House of Representatives uh, in a unanimous vote on four articles uh, dealing with a range of uh, corrupt uh, schemes involving attorneys that appeared in his courtroom first as a state judge later on the federal bench, uh, a corrupt scheme involving bail bonds where he would set bonds to maximize the profits of the bail bonds business and in return get trips and meals and gifts and other things of value. Uh, it also uh, charges him uh, in an article dealing with a number of false filings in his bankruptcy, personal bankruptcy, among others, where he filed a petition in a false name. Uh, and then finally, uh, there's an article that deals with the confirmation process in the Senate itself. Uh, his concealment of these corrupt schemes, his concealment, for example, of the payment uh, or the, the sending of curator cases to lawyers as a state judge and receiving kickbacks from those state lawyers of a portion of the proceeds from the curator cases. Uh, so uh, those are the four articles. The House returned unanimously. Uh, and as you know, Bill, the way the process works, uh, the, the House impeachment is like an indictment, like a grand jury indictment. Uh, it then goes to trial in the Senate, and we've just concluded the trial about a week or two ago. Sounds like a lot of the uh, the charges, the impeachment uh, articles against him, were uh, for issues that happened while he was a state judge. The issue here is not his federal judgeship then. Uh, well, certainly some of the conduct predated uh, his service on the federal bench, but uh, most of the conduct, uh, I think, in fact, is while he's a federal judge. Uh, for example, the attorneys that he had the kickback relationship while he was a state judge, he later is assigned a multi-hundred million dollar case on the federal court, and six weeks before trial, one of the parties brings in these same lawyers that he was getting the kickbacks from, uh, and during the pendency of that case, while the case is under submission, he hits up that lawyer for 2000 in cash, which is delivered to him in an envelope. So that, uh, that act happens while he's on the federal bench. His failure to recuse himself, to take him off the case because of the prior relationship is certainly very relevant. That's also while he's a federal judge. Uh, he continues his relationship with the bondsman while he's on the federal bench. Uh, and, of course, the, the bankruptcy itself and the false filings there all took place while he was a federal judge. The one count that has only pre-federal judge conduct is the count involving the uh, false statements and the concealment to the Senate during the confirmation itself. Uh, and we presented evidence during the trial, for example, that he offered to expunge the conviction of one of the employees of the bail bonds business, but said he would only do it after his confirmation hearing. Uh, and in fact, the evidence showed that he uh, took that step of expungement only after his confirmation. Uh, so that uh, all involves conduct, uh, at least before he was sworn into the federal bench, that one article, but the other three have conduct both pre uh, and uh, post his appointment to the federal bench. You're the chief Democratic manager for the impeachment process. Your, your Republican colleague is Bob Goodlatte of Virginia. So how soon did you get involved in this, and what was the development of the case like? Well, I think it was probably almost two years ago, the mm -hmm. chair of the Judiciary Committee uh, asked me if I would chair a, a task force looking into the potential impeachment of two federal judges. Uh, Judge Porteous from New Orleans and Judge Kent from Texas. Uh, Judge Kent uh, had been um, uh, allegedly involved in assaulting, sexually assaulting two women in the courthouse. Uh, we did bring impeachment charges against him. Uh, they were passed by the House, and then Judge Kent resigned, uh, ended up going to jail. Uh, in the case of uh, Judge Porteous, we did a full investigation, uh, ended up uh, bringing those four impeachment articles before the House, uh, which were passed unanimously. So the investigation uh, took about, uh, I guess, about a year to get to the present uh, place, uh, but that's how it began. Congressman Schiff represents the 29th District, uh, Pasadena and Glendale and other areas in the uh, 29th, and also has spent time as a federal prosecutor in Los Angeles. So did you have to dust off your, your prosecut prosecutorial skills to, uh, to undertake this case? Uh, I really did, and I was hoping it was going to be like riding a bike because it had been about 17 or 18 years since I'd tried a case. But I had been in the corruption section in the U.S. Attorney's Office, so I did have some relevant uh, training way back when. 
Uh, but I have to say, Bill, it was a very uh, impressive panel. The Senate uh, hears the case in a, a panel of 12 senators. Uh, the closing arguments, which will take place in about a month or before the full Senate. But the 12 member Senate panel included uh, about half a dozen former attorney generals and U.S. attorneys themselves. Uh, and uh, they were a pretty impressive group uh, that stepped in whenever the parties were done with their examination of witnesses to ask their own questions. And they were quite thorough themselves. But the process itself is a little different from a trial. So how did you adjust for that? Well, it is. It's a, a very kind of strange hybrid in the sense that uh, in a normal case when you're, when you're trying a, a jury trial, you've got the judge acting as the arbiter of the law, but you have a jury that's the trier of the fact. Uh, in this case, the, the Senate committee and indeed the entire Senate is both the judge of the fact and the judge of the law. Uh, so when we had pretrial depositions, you, it was as if you had a juror in the room because they were presided over by one of the senators. When you made arguments on motions about whether certain evidence should come in, you were arguing it to the very committee that would uh, either view the evidence or not view it, but could not help but uh, be aware of the evidence because you had to argue the motion to them. So it was a strange hybrid in that sense. Uh, it's very unusual, Bill, frankly, as a prosecutor to be able to talk about a case uh, before it's reached the final resolution. You mean uh, talk about it here in an in interview here. situation, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But this is a, a very public process. It was designed by the framers to be that way. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it is very unusual in, in many respects. This was also, a, 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 easy to say, a fairly colorful trial and at some point. Some interesting characters for, that uh, Judge Porteous dealt with. And a uh, headline from the Times-Picayune in, in New Orleans reflects that. The headline, Lap Dance, Bucket of Shrimp. Gretna mentality discussed in Porteous impeachment hearings. How did you keep a straight face? Well, Frank, it was easy to keep a straight face because uh, of the seriousness of the, the undertaking. This is not something the House uh, does very often, bring impeachment charges. I think uh, only a couple, you know, a dozen to two dozen times in history. So it, they're rare proceedings. We're talking about a lifetime appointment and a very high standard in terms of impeachment. But you're right, it was uh, kind of a fascinating view into the legal climate, uh, at least at the time, in New Orleans and Gretna. Uh, I, I do want to say, though, that uh, this case is an aberration in the sense that I've worked with and met a great many federal judges all around the country who are extraordinary and, and do great work. Yeah. Uh, but, of course, these are the cases that come to our attention. The Senate Impeachment Trial Committee, the, the website is, a, is, is full of all sorts of resources for folks who want to want to take a look, one of, which is, one of which is the background to the uh, impeachment process itself. And in that, the Con Congressional Rep Rep Resource Service is a political process, this process of impeachment, in that the uh, judges are appointed by the Senate, but they are impeached by both the, the House and the Senate uh, uh, together. What in a political year? How do you keep out the sort of partisanship we've seen in other issues on the Hill? Well, you know, uh, happily in a case like this, there's really no partisanship. Uh, Bob Goodlatte and I uh, worked uh, perfectly well across party lines. The Senate committee was made up of both Democratic and Republican senators, uh, and so there wasn't really even a hint of partisanship. When the framers described this as a political process, they didn't mean political in the terms we understand it today, sure. of being partisan, but rather that this was something that would be decided by, decided by the legislative branch, that it would have to give content to those terms, high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, and, and that was a process, you know, that would weigh a lot of facts that would be outside the province of a normal criminal jury. So it's political in that sense, but not political in a partisan sense. Uh, and I think, you know, we all kind of brought to this uh, a sober judgment about what kind of uh, judges we want to have on the bench with kind of conduct is simply beyond the pale. You mentioned a moment ago that the, uh, you will present the case to the Senate, assumingly, assuming that uh, uh, after, the, after the elections. What sort of punishment does Judge Porteous face? Well, this is the unique thing, unique thing about uh, an impeachment. Uh, there's no punishment in the sense of going to jail or being sanctioned in one way or another. Impeachment is about removal from office, the, the, the really two potential sanctions are removal from office and a prohibition on uh, taking up some other federal office in the future. Uh, this is why it's not a criminal proceeding. It's basically the only way you can remove somebody who has a lifetime appointment to the bench. Uh, but those are the only sanctions available. And in fact, in the Kent case that I mentioned earlier, uh, after he was impeached in the House, he resigned. That's not an uncommon uh, trajectory in impeachment cases. 
once he resigned, there was no point in going forward in the Senate with the impeachment trial because the remedy had already been brought about when he left the bench. Does Judge Porteous, does this mean he's immune to other uh, criminal prosecution? Uh, it doesn't mean uh, they're, they're immune at all. And in fact, in many cases, you'll see a criminal prosecution go forward before uh, a, an impeachment case. Uh, you have a, you know, rare, rare situations where someone might be acquitted in a criminal case and still be impeached. Uh, here, the Department of Justice did investigate. They declined to bring charges, but the House of Representatives thought the conduct was so deplorable that the judge could not be allowed to remain on the bench. Certainly, this took, you mentioned you started two years ago. This took a lot of extra time. Do you, do you get extra pay for this? How do, you, how do you work in all the other congressional duties you got to do and campaign this year? Uh, no, there's no extra pay whatsoever. Uh, it, it's a challenge. Uh, the, the trial was uh, the better part of two weeks, and of course, a lot of preparation going up to the trial. And I, I did discover that uh, it was a lot easier uh, 17 or 18 years ago when I was a prosecutor. I think I was a lot younger and had more energy. But uh, it was a challenge, and I felt very uh, cut off from my legislative office uh, when I was in the middle of trial. Congressman Adam Schiff, the uh, chief Democratic manager the, in the impeachment trial against Judge Thomas Porteous, thanks for joining us. It's been a pleasure.